Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm on LeeChess.org and going to play a 5-2 game. Okay. E4, E5 it is. Let's play like way E. Let's try to. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he likes this. So do I. I like this d3 system. So what's the big idea here with bishop c5? Just getting it outside of the pawn chain, are you? Well, let's grab him now. Okay, taking away from the center, are you? Alrighty. Well, I'm going to play what? Let's play queen e2 right now. Yep. Right now. Maybe threatening to take on e5. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I have uh, have some experience. I did uh, cover a game recently, Wei Yi versus uh, Magnus Carlsen. Although, no, I'm mistaken, Wei versus David Navarra, check that. Uh, they played a uh, similar similar game where bishop captures knight was played after the bishop moved, but not in reply to a6, so I think I'm up a move in this position. Okay, how can I maybe make use of that fact that I'm maybe one move up. I think by now black was castled. So this is a typical rerouting of the knight. Um, well, I still need to just get my knight working. Let's go straight in for this in here. I may, I'm keeping the option open to castle queen side. And my knight, I believe, belongs right here. They're going to go in for a quick knight to e6, aren't they? Okay, well, can I really do so much about that? Maybe. This is something worth considering. Hmm. Knight here as well? Uh, this is 5-2, right? Okay, yes it is. Hmm. Well. I'm going to go with something. Let's try knight c4. Spent a real lot of time on that one. I'm expecting knight to f8 to e6. Okay, hang on. Not this knight into f5, but rather this one. It takes two steps for him. It takes three for him, but I think he's uh, more important to have on f3 to watch over d4 for when the knight arrives on e6. I think I want to go in for this next. He could be kicked certainly be uh, kicked to watch out for these two squares when the knight arrives on e6. I think they should go for that instead of castles, making use of f8. Okay. And maybe... Hmm, would I be okay with the knight arriving on f4? Let's see. I think g6 is going to be strong to kick my knight when it arrives on f5. Let's go with this. On bishop takes, I'm taking with the pawn to cover these squares. They're playing that. That can't be right. I'm going to open the position up. Huh. Okay, I could take the bishop and play d4. That's why I'm thinking that this wasn't a good idea for black. It's my opportunity to take their bishop. If I don't play d4 now, they maybe play c5. 
Um, do I play this right now or one move later? I'm going to play it right now, actually. If takes, they take with the pawn. And then on d4, if I'm ever taking, they could take with the d-pawn. Follow? Now I could take the bishop. And should. It's with check. Not quite sure how to take the pawn on d. They should take with the queen. I have a long-term idea now, four versus three, a healthy four versus three on the king's side. So should it get stripped to a king and pawn specific ending? I like that. Might have a case of opposite color bishops. On queen b4, I have c3 to defend b2. I'm also taking with the knight to avoid a pin. So the position has opened up and their knight is still on the back rank. I'm one move away. I'm now with the d-file completely opened, I'm much more inclined to castle queenside. Two very good things are accomplished now with queenside castling, king safety, and rook activity. Do not always get that. Should I go straight in for it? Let's get a move on. Oh, this was another serious move to consider. Oh well. Knight f4, queen here. Yeah, I should have considered knight here. That could have been a dagger. A dagger! Move forward. Throw a punch. Prepare to double on the d-file. I guess queen e6, although the bishop will struggle to get developed. A moment to maybe stop queenside castles. Rook here, bishop c5. We're going to be castled on opposite wings. Hmm. Can I stop them from castling? Um. I don't know. I could insert this check. Let's do that. They touch their g pawn. That's some serious dark square weaknesses that I could maybe exploit. Okay. Maybe now they're just not going to castle. Oh, you're moving forward. You're definitely moving forward. On bishop e6, I believe I do this. g3, queen here. That's maybe quite all right. Maybe I do play b3. However, I have to be concerned about a4. Do they have time to do that? Don't know c5, and then taking here would be very greedy. And they seem to uh, be a fan of that idea. Rook here, threatens bishop, takes pawn. Nah. Let's play to a dark square. Right here. They don't have development. On queen takes pawn, I have queen here. They are not developed. Queen takes pawn, I could take here as well. Bishop here in queenside castle, I think, is a must. These next two moves, very serious. They're not doing that. Let's just keep my e-pawn. Bishop is defended. Bishop here. I'm just going to do that. I'm fearful of this pawn break if I play b3 instead. So let's just get out of the way. King there. Castling by hand. Can't do that though. Drops h h7. I have pressure there. Let's just double up. Improve my bishop position. They're gonna go at me with b5. That's the only thing would that would force me to find some. Uh, you know, to force me to be a bit more accurate with my moves. Otherwise, I could just play this a bit on the slower side. G4, h4, h5. Yeah, maybe I do this anyhow. Meeting any b4 move with this. Let's look more direct. Their king is on the 7th rank. They want a queen trade? I don't. No way. Hmm. Let me, let me repeat once. I'm going to go to a different spot with the queen right here. I want to keep pressure on h. Let's get g4 in. 
G5, I have this. H5, I'm doing this. I'm breaking down their dark squares. That's my idea. I want my bishop on this diagonal. I could play queen h6, bishop h6. I could play g5. This is winning. I'm just trying to find a way to win. Let's start with the check. And then here. Get my bishop on this diagonal as soon as possible. Let's do it. I have pressure on c7 as well. Keep pressure here. Bishop here, there shouldn't be a defense. Well, I guess queen f8 still, but I'm, I'm as soon as I get my bishop on f6, both rooks are dead. This must be busted for black. A bishop on e5? No. No queen trade. I'm on c7, bishop to e5 next. Chases the rook away from defense. Bishop here, I could already think about rook sacks. Rook d7. I won't be taking this pawn, though. Looking for more. And this is going to net me a lot more, I believe. There's no bishop move with check. Evening out some on the clock. That move I did not consider. So... That is so not cool. <gasps> oh, I could just take the rook. What a blind spot. Alright, let's open it up. I almost didn't do that. Unbelievable. I almost missed taking the rook. I forgot what my threat was. <laughs> okay, we're going to insert this check and then take here. Or... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Not the best what I'm doing here, but I'm up material now. All right, let's just pile up on this bishop. Seems like a pretty clean approach. Pile up on that bishop and that's it. I could take the time to recapture. Yep, mass exchange is incoming. No, I'm just winning material. Bishop moves, I'm getting rook. And that should do it. Hmm. All right, I guess they're gonna play this one out some. I'm up a rook now, though. Playing with increment. Alrighty. Grab a pawn. Get a check. This is the new 7th rank, the 6th rank. That's where there are a lot of pawns. Let's trade down. No back rankers. And they resigned. Okay. Um, yeah, I spent a lot of time in the opening on that one. Um... Yeah, it was the Wei versus David Navarra game that I was trying to recall and uh, note some differences between our game and their game. Um, I'm, I, I believe that a6 wasn't played in their game. I think it was knight here, d3. And then after bishop here, white voluntarily retakes, not after this, uh, not after a6. And after takes knight here, castles, queen here, knight here. So I think we had, I'm not certain, but I believe we had this position. This was, uh, this, excuse me, was the position in the Way versus Dave and Navarra game. However, in our game, black had the pawn on a6 and was uncastled. Everything else was the same. Um, so we get to this position right here. Pawn on a6, and they're uncastled. So that's why I was taking so much time here, because I was trying to work out... Well, I was trying to find a way to make use of this fact that black was essentially behind uh, a move. Uh, I don't know if I really approached it the right way, but yeah, okay. We go with the knight on c4. This is a very typical maneuver to get the knight into e6. Uh, I'm not sure about my move here, bishop to e3. Maybe it is fine. 
I would have taken with the pawn just to cover these squares. These are very important squares to watch over. But I think I think black would do that. Run bishop here. If I take here and he'll soon return and get to these two. Maybe I could hold off. Maybe uh maybe this is even an idea. You know, and on castles now I could think about taking and then blasting open the center. Yeah, this uh, exchange of my d-pawn for their e-pawn results in a healthy 4 versus 3 majority on the king's side. This right here. So this is a long-term advantage to have. Compare that with black, who has an unhealthy a group of 4 pawns versus 3, which on their own cannot... Uh, this group of 4 versus my 3 cannot, on their own, create a pass pawn, whereas mine can. So this this eventually did happen in the game where we had the e-pawn exchange for my d-pawn. But, uh, yeah, I was trying to figure out some difference there with being up a move, essentially. So I was quite happy to see that move. Bishop, C, uh, Bishop d6. I don't think the computer will be a fan of that. Uh, I'm thinking the knight should have played into e6. Takes, takes. Let me throw in the evaluation right now. Arrows are on. What is it saying right around here? Wants to take. Suggest pawn takes? Yeah. Well, even popped up knight takes, but... You know, knight here. Even position. Here's another thing. If I'm trying to get into the f5 square... Okay, yeah, I, this is what I was considering, but I, I didn't like it. Well, they can't go straight in for that because of a queen check. I don't know about that. I don't know if black would really be a fan of uh, going on castle like this. Knight h4, bishop here. If I went with, um, let me say this much. If, because this is a big moment where I, I gave a lot of, uh, I believe this was the move I spent a lot of time. If I tried knight here, knight e6, and knight here, suppose my knight gets kicked. You know, where does he go? So one thing that ran through my mind, which was if I played a g3, this knight f4 move, if I'm ever capturing the knight, look at this guy. He's having a tough day. So I don't know about this idea of jumping into f5. f5 is not a reliable home. Be kicked. Different if the pawn's on g5. But, yeah, I always, you know, to be concerned of you know, the g6 move, and I have to know where will my knight's next home be. And I didn't have a good answer to that. So that's why I didn't shoot right in for this f5 square. Bishop d6, and this is where there is a change. That's what I thought. It does like to go with d4 right away. The difference being, if you take, they take with the pawn, and now if challenged, any capture could be met with the recapture of their c-pawn that has been converted to a d-pawn. Whereas playing d4 first, now I'm threatening to uh, acquire that long-term asset of having a 4 versus 3 majority on the king's side by not being so quick to capture on this d6 square. So I went with d4 take. I took with, well, I did the in-between move. I guess I was a little concerned about the bishop maybe running away, although I guess there isn't really a great square I could run away to. If bishop c5, I have knight takes c6, or that one, <laughs> which is better, winning a piece. Yeah, let's not forget, as soon as that knight moves, there's this open diagonal. Yeah, let me even go back and reprogram myself some because this f6 square, or excuse me, the f6 move, I've only really been seeing it as, okay, defending e5, but let's look at the downside. Open diagonal now towards the king. Open diagonal towards the king for when he is castled. Moves like d4, permit 
queen checks, uh, knight moves, king knight moves allow checks in this direction. Okay, noted, just to kind of have it in the back of my mind. These are some of the things I do. So, castle queen side, yep. Some, uh, I believe, I don't know where, some, some viewer I think at some point asked me, you know, when is a good time to castle queenside? You know, it's so popular to castle kingside. This would certainly be a case where castling queenside is good. If you have, if you can castle queenside and have your rook on an open or even half open file, it's certainly worth a closer look. Uh, typically when you castle queenside, you'll have to invest an additional tempo to move the king over because this is a, this is a weak point. You don't get that when you castle kingside. You're already watching over that furthest that uh that rooked pawn but uh yeah castle queenside in cases oh consider castling queenside in cases where you have the rook activity or it may, maybe even in uh some rare cases where it is not yet an open d file and it, but it can potentially open up but uh yeah if it's already opened like this one it's really crying out to be played uh, so it's liking my position here. It likes the queen h5 move. I'm glad I spotted that. Um, right around here, I was considering moves like rook c4, but that's that's going a bit astray when you're taking a rook off of the only open file in a position just to line up some tactic. Yeah, don't know about rook to c4. It's also running into this. <laughs> so, yeah, I went with queen check, and it's pretty serious now for black. Yeah, their their improvement was right here, not playing bishop d6. Right here, not playing bishop d6, but rather, uh, well, it's going with the capture, but I don't really see anything wrong with that, with just getting the knight into e6 and castling. But I guess this was the other move to go with. Bishop here, bishop f6, knight e6 is an idea. They are throwing a punch at my knight. But as the computer's pointing out here on this bishop e6 move, I could be considering a break in the center now. Black is uh, a bit more behind in development. This would be another case I would still look into castling queenside because of these possibilities of pushing, opening up the... Uh, the D file, well, in both, in both ways, right? Potential capture, potential push, exchange of the D pawn and C pawn. But uh, yeah, this was another, this was another approach. Knight E6 instead of Bishop to D6. In the game, they went to D6. We had this break, and I have to be the preferred side here, development-wise, long term, four versus three on the king side. These all tip in my favor. These both tip in my favor. And, yeah, it's just going to be a very tough defense here because the dark squares are completely broken down already. It's calling for the final crack at their last kingside pawn, who is on a dark square. What's the trick here on queen takes? Here, rook there, bishop here. Ha! Huh. Computer makes very quick use of those dark squares. And on takes here, that's pretty lethal. Yeah, that's a deadly move right there, huh? Yeah, the dark squares are broken down. I went with uh, the modest f3, just defending e4. I guess I could have been more direct. But yeah, due to the pressure on uh, this h7 pawn, there's no contesting this file. And because you can't contest the file, the bishop and queen are both restricted to babysitting the d7 square. Come to think of it now, I think on this queen f8 move, I may have been able to play rook d7. Mm, it was something I should have at least considered. Don't know that it's really working out. Queen f8. 
Yeah, there's there's not going to be a defense. Well, it did pop up for a moment. Not so convincing and unnecessary. It's unnecessary to go in for these complications to to enter an imbalanced position when I could keep the keep the balance in material uh well not in material but just keep it where only I have the advantage. Uh that would be unnecessary. Unnecessary complications to go in for that imbalance. Thought it better to approach it like this in another e5 push. Bishop here. Wow. It's going off the charts. The evaluation. Queen f8. Now it's maybe a different story. Takes. Takes. King here. Isn't this even a move? Get the queen. Discovered. Checks. Okay. Yeah. I should have went and looked a bit more at this uh, pawn sack. And one way to look at it is if there was any fear in my mind of, oh, you know, it's a pawn loss, well, okay, should it even get to this point, you know, opposite color bishops, and maybe, you know, that pawn isn't even so relevant. But, of course, my mentality should be more so along the lines of, okay, let's still play this position where you're looking to attack, we're not quite at that point of opposite color bishop ending me being down a pawn and I could try and hold a uh, hold it to a draw but yeah I should have been looking more into the e5 push is what I'm getting at you know it's just broken down from here definitely want to keep the queens on I almost missed bishop takes rook <laughs> I almost forgot I was on the rook okay and that's pretty much it Getting material there. What was the, you know, the graph? It was that bishop d6 move again? Right here. Couldn't really do that. Something else was needed. Takes, 96. Okay, well, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. And I hope you got something out of it. That's all for now. Take care.